So my ad form is I build custom guitars and basses. So I guess the simple answer to that is string instruments. The way I got into building guitars and basses is basically there was stuff I wanted as a kid and I couldn't afford, so it was cheaper for me to make it myself. So like I wanted to, what really caused it was I wanted a seven string bass. And at the time, the cheapest one was like three grand. And as a high school kid, not don't fly. So I basically just taught myself how to do it. I bought some books and literally took a hatchet to a base I had to take it apart. I think you told me once that um, you worked with a luthier. Yeah, um, I was actually, it was in, I took metal fab in high school and I was building an acoustic guitar body out of aluminum and a luther had shown up because he knew the teacher that was uh, helping me and I basically worked with him for a while like on the side and stuff like that but that was mainly that was mostly like classical string instruments like cellos violins violas upright basses that stuff like that so it wasn't really guitar but that's why like I call myself a luther not a guitar builder because Luther can work on string instruments, and then guitar builders just work on guitars. Um, what are the parts of a guitar? Uh, you have two main parts, well, a few different main parts. So, like, you have the body, which is the body shape. It's like jumping the pipe where you're holding on to, and then you have the neck. You have the pickups, and then the controls. And then for hardware on the body, you also have the bridge, which anchors the strings uh, to the body. Then on the neck, you have a section of the neck, you have the fretboard. Underneath the fretboard inside the neck is a truss rod, which depending on the style of truss rod, you can tighten or loosen it to bow the neck one way or the other. Because on a typical guitar, you have almost 100 pounds of tension on the neck. So the neck will actually want to pull and bow. So you have use the truss rod to pull it back. And then the, you have your frets, which is for, dictates the, the semitones you're playing. So it's it's a mathematical formula the way they lay it out. So that way, when you press press down, you actually play the note you want. Compared to um, like a fretless instrument, like a cello, a violin, you have to have your finger in the exact right spot. It's kind of like easy mode for the, if you're a classical player. Uh, and then the only other thing on the neck is the tuners, which basically will tighten or loosen the strings to bring them to the correct pitch. So, what type of materials do you use? Uh, materials is a weird. Um, it's kind of controversial in the like guitar plays. For me, I use a lot of different stuff. Like I use a lot of different types of wood. I um, incorporate gold in my work. So uh, if there's like knots, some people will fill it with resin. Some people will avoid that from their wood, like especially on a decorative top. I'll I'll get like a piece of wood that has like like that's been eaten by anim like uh, worms and fungus, and any of those voids or defects, as some people call, I'll fill it with gold to highlight them. Uh, I use, I also use a bunch of other random materials for decorative things like silver wire, uh, crushed opal. Um, I've done some other jewels, like uh, I've done some stuff with emeralds and rubies for like for markers. So, you know, on the neck where you are quickly. Uh, one thing I'm actually doing right now is I'm using, I'm adding LEDs into the neck for the fret positions and it'll actually show you how loud you're playing, like a VU meter. And I actually been doing this all week. I, I wrote a program. So I'll have different modes and it will react to my playing. And the way I actually did, wrote the code is I just used AI because I can't really code that great. So I'm kind of been picking things from different areas and combining them. Yeah, it, it's actually kind of funny. So guitar plays are ri more rigid on what they buy and bass play is more open. There are more custom bass companies than there are custom guitar companies. Like when I say custom, I mean like true custom instruments. Uh, a lot of guitar players, they want a Gibson, they want a Fender, or like some of the other big names like Jackson and stuff like that. Like if they're more in metal, they try to, if they're more metal players, they tend to do certain brands. But guitar players are like, I want this guitar off the shelf. And that's good enough for me. Bass players are like, I want something that looks pretty. I want decorative wood. It, it's a really weird thing I notice. It's like very rigid and like like the Fender Telecast, for example, has been made since 1951. I want to believe I can't remember that exact year, but that still is like one of the number one guitars used by country artists, for example. It's like they just buy the Fender off the rack, and then like, you, but it's one thing I notice is bass players are more likely to buy a custom instrument, have some custom features. They want exotic woods, and guitar players are like. 
oh, I just want that painted black Strat or that Sunburst Gibson Les Paul. It's, it's really weird how it worked out that way. So when you're designing, do you, what's your process like? Um, well, if it's for me versus someone else, I basically find out some features they want, uh, like neck width, because that's like things that will directly interact with the person. So um, there's no set standards for like neck width, uh, fingerboard radius. So I'll get like what they want. And if they don't, I'll be like, oh, do you like a jazz bass? Do you like a P bass? Because I know those dimensions or like, all right, what basses do you like? So like I'll look up the information on the bass so I can get close to the neck profiles they like. But my, pro my building process is I basically start with the neck because uh, everything, I base everything because you have to deal with uh, scale length and the neck really sets that. So I'll design the neck and then from once I have the neck designed, and then I'll design the body shape around it. And, and then I'll add the pickups in, like all the custom routes and anything that customizes it. Like my 3D models, when you look at them, they're very basic. I don't, when I make a model, I don't, have all the different wood stacked up. I just make a very generic solid single piece because it's when you make it on stuff on CNC, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't know what you're cutting. So then I'll just glue up my body planks and cut them out. But I generally start with the neck, then I go to the body, and then I go for, uh, and then once I'm done designing that, I'll go move over and start gluing up my wood and go from there and then prep the wood to be cut out to the shapes I need. What are some mistakes you used to make that you don't make anymore? Uh, I, I actually use the principle, it's a uh, fail fast. So you just, just, you're better off to like, instead of like procrastinating, worrying about doing, making a mistake, just make a mistake, learn from it and fix it. So it's like, I'm constantly making mistakes, but like, uh, things I really, uh, like stop doing mistake wise is just better planning out like, um, like how to like lay out everything so it'll work from the start versus all right i'm just going to work on the body and then i have to figure out oh how am i going to add the neck in i just i've learned how to just group things up so it's better flow pattern so i don't have those mistakes but like i used to have do you think with all the internet videos on how to make things that's helping people be creative or do you think that's hindering people from learning on their own uh i think with like all the videos that are on youtube it, it does two things like it gives people inspiration on to do things, but they also sometimes they don't, exp they'll just follow like the guides and tutorials on their own. They don't take the time to experiment on their own. They don't, they'll just, all right, this is the way to do it. And they don't open up to like, is there other ways to do it? Or what else can I use in this? So it's like internet videos are awesome. Like I, I've actually, I watch a Chrisman Guitars. It's a UK builder. I watch their channel every now and then, and it's like every now and then I'm like, oh, that's a cool way to do it. He 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 builds necks a certain way. I I could do them that way. I just choose not to because I'm more comfortable doing it the way I want to do it, and it's easier and quicker uh, for me. But like YouTube is actually a great resource for a lot of things. Um, but it's like the main thing is the person. It's like are they going to just follow it like a rigid plan, or are they on experiment with it? The, the trick is experiment with it. You might find a better way that works for you with what you have. That goes back to what you were saying about uh, fail quickly. Yep. I always fail, qu fail quick and fast yep. and cheap. If someone's not out, I would say not to worry about materials because there's an uh, instrument called a diddly bow. It's kind of pretty common in like Appalachian area down south that like before a kid gets a guitar, they have to make their own diddly bow. You can literally make it with a two by four, a beer bottle and like one pickup and a string and some nails. It's like, you can make a sound with anything. Uh, like just experiment, like, uh, especially if, if you want to learn how to make instruments, I, I suggest looking into like diddly bow. It's just so simple to make. I, I made one when I was uh, younger with a tree branch. Uh, but like a good example is the musician called C stick. Uh, I never say this right. C sick Steve. He has a guitar. It's two hubcaps, a broom handle and three strings. And his music's amazing. He's won a Grammy. Like people sometimes worry like, oh, it has to be this fancy wood, it has to be all this stuff, it has all the have this electronics, like especially musicians, they get, uh, it's called gas, it's gear acquisition syndrome. They worry way too much about certain things instead of just playing. It's like, if you want to learn how to play, like, or build, I should say, uh, I suggest buying a cheap kit. Uh, you can buy these kits, they're on finished wood. You don't have to do fret work on them. They're like between a hundred, $200, buy one of those, assemble it and make it better. Like 
you obviously you don't have to learn, have to learn how to sand the body and finish the body, but the neck, you don't have to learn how to uh, fix the frets because the, they basically just slap the frets on and they don't do anything else. You have to do a bunch of stuff afterwards, like level them, crown them, remove the shop edges and stuff like that. I recommend get a kit instrument, assemble it, make it better, then build a body because the body is a lot easier than a neck. And then once you build a body, then you should try to build a neck and don't be afraid. It's like my first instrument I built, I still have it. It is hideous, but I love the thing because it's like it's this big purple monster. It's all purple hot. It weighs way too much. It weighs way too much uh, for a four string. And there's like you can see mistakes I made on it. And like I just keep it just for because it's cool. It's the first one I made. But the big thing is don't be afraid and just try it. It's like with everything, just try it. If you fail, try again.